Monomers and polymers is the first part of the first topic in A-level biology for the exam board AQA, the first topic being biological molecules. And I would argue that that biological molecules topic is one of the most important things you'll learn in A-level biology because it underpins so much of the stuff that comes up later on in the course. In addition to obviously looking at what monomers and polymers are, we're going to look at what happens in condensation and hydrolysis reactions, and then some examples of polymers and the monomers from which they're made. What are monomers and polymers? Mono means one, and that can help you remember that monomers are smaller repeating molecules or units from which larger molecules or polymers are made. Some books will describe these as building blocks, which isn't wrong, but it will be too vague to get you the mark in the exam. Poly means many, and so polymers are molecules made from many or a large number of identical or similar monomer molecules. However you say it, make sure you get across this idea of them being made from many molecules because something made from just two monomers would actually be a dimer and so not a polymer. Occasionally these come up as one mark definitions, but most importantly, you just need to be able to use these terms. What happens in a condensation reaction? In a condensation reaction, two molecules join together, forming a chemical bond and releasing a water molecule. There are a few ways you can remember that. So firstly, look at the word, break it down. It's kind of got the word condense in it, which means to make something more compact or dense, which makes sense if you're joining two molecules together. Or condensation starts with the letter C and you can think C for connecting molecules. You can remember that a water molecule is released with the association of thinking about condensation in real life, like condensation where you've got water droplets on a window. Remember, if you're drawing a condensation reaction in the exam, which won't be a simple diagram like this, it will more be in the context of say carbohydrates where you're drawing a condensation reaction between two alpha glucose molecules, but We'll look at that later on. Just make sure you don't forget to include the water molecule H2O in the diagram. Although it is possible that you could have a one mark question asking you what a condensation reaction is, that doesn't really tend to happen. Much more likely is that you're just going to be using this term wherever appropriate. You'll see what I mean in later topics, just something to bear in mind because sometimes even just mentioning the term condensation reaction and briefly saying what happens, making sure you're naming the bond and specifying that the water molecule is released, that could be a marking point. An application question I've noticed come up a few times now in different ways is where they give you a molecule that isn't necessarily on the specification. So say something like raffinose. They give you a bit of info about that molecule. So say raffinose is made of three molecules each with the formula C6H12O6. You would then have to give the formula a raffinose and it isn't just as simple as multiplying everything by three. What it's testing your knowledge of is that there would be two condensation reactions and therefore two water molecules released. So you would need to subtract four hydrogens and two oxygens. In this example, leaving you with C18H32O16. But like I said, it could be any context and they might not ask you for the formula. They might ask you how many carbon, hydrogen and oxygen atoms there are. What happens in a hydrolysis reaction? This is basically just the opposite of a condensation reaction. Two molecules that were joined together will be separated most importantly, that breaks the chemical bond using a water molecule. To remember that, you just need to break the word down. Hydro means water and lysis means to split. So it's splitting using water. We've got the same diagram here, but it would just be going the other way. And again, don't forget to include that H2O molecule. Although it isn't important at this stage, we will look at hydrogen bonds later on in the biological molecules topic. And I thought it's worth pointing out that condensation hydrolysis reactions don't apply to hydrogen bonds, which is really just a weak association. So if you're talking about hydrogen bonds forming or being broken apart, don't use the term condensation or hydrolysis or you'll be penalised and you won't get that marking point. But other than that, just like condensation reactions, you'll need to use the term hydrolysis wherever appropriate. Give examples of polymers and the monomers from which they're made. This is actually just going to give you an introduction into some of the other biological molecules that we'll look at. So we'll look at all of this in more detail in the relevant sections. The monomers of carbohydrates are called monosaccharides. And when many of these join together, they form polysaccharides. Saccharide basically just means sugar. So you can think of monosaccharide as single sugar unit, polysaccharide as many sugar units joined together. The bonds that form between the monosaccharides are called glycosidic bonds. Monosaccharides and polysaccharides are really types of molecules. You've then got examples within those. The main examples of monosaccharides being glucose, and there are two types or two isomers called alpha glucose and beta glucose. Alpha glucose molecules are the monomers of the polymers starch and glycogen, and beta glucose molecules are the monomers of cellulose. So remember, all of these are examples of carbohydrates. Lipids are another group of biological molecules, but lipids aren't polymers. That's because they're not actually made from repeating monomers so they don't fit the definition. Proteins are another group of biological molecule, 
and the monomers of these are amino acids. When many amino acids join together, they form a polypeptide, and one or more polypeptides is what makes up a protein. This one's a nice easy one to remember because the clues in the name here, the bonds that form between amino acid monomers are called peptide bonds. You'd also come across dipeptides in the proteins topic, but these aren't actually polymers because they're just made from two amino acids joined together. So they're examples of dimers instead. Because there's so many different types of proteins, the questions won't always be as simple as what's the monomer of a polypeptide? It could give you an example of a protein which you'll learn about later on in the course, such as an antibody or hemoglobin, and ask you what the monomer of that is, but it would still be amino acids. The final example of polymers and the monomers from which they're made comes under the nucleic acids topic. This is DNA and RNA. The monomers of these are nucleotides, and when many nucleotides join together via condensation reactions forming phosphodiester bonds, a polynucleotide forms. DNA nucleotides make make up a DNA polynucleotide and RNA nucleotides make up an RNA polynucleotide. There are differences between the two which will be covered in the nucleic acids topic. RNA just stays as a single polynucleotide strand, whereas DNA is actually made up of two polynucleotide strands. There has been an extended response question, a five mark question, which encompasses everything in the monomers and polymers topic. And to be honest, extended response questions aren't going to get much nicer than that. This was in the 2019 A-Level Biology Paper 1. Describe the chemical reactions involved in the conversion of polymers to monomers and monomers to polymers. Give two examples of polymers and their associated monomers to illustrate your answer. That's something that you can now have a go at. Before we finish this topic, just one more thing to point out that comes up on the specification. It's a bit of a random point, but still worth mentioning, and that is that the variety of life, both past and present, is extensive, but the biochemical basis of life is similar for all living things. Anyway, that is everything for monomers and polymers. Next up will be carbohydrates.